Sylvia Bender is a MD, PhD, and is a CEO of Ondamed Corporation companies in Germany and New York. And uh, I hope you're observant to know she is the second phase of our Germany connection. And I, with a name like Lodhotz, I have to mention that. And uh, she received her uh, ND degree from the College of Naturopathy in London. And it was followed by her PH degree in naturopathy. And she moved to the United States, and in 2002, with her husband, Rolf, they established Ondamed. And you can read on the conference website the remarkable story of how she treated her five-year-old son. It's a fascinating story. So we're very fortunate to have, I think, the timing of our conference was such that um, she worked us in, flew in from Germany, and is here. And we're very pleased to have Dr. Bender. Kind uh, introduction, and I want to thank you, Dr. Yu, for inviting me to speak here, for inviting my team and our company to be part of this wonderful conference. Thank you for your dedication to alternative medicine. And um, great to be here with this room filled of practitioners that you are attracting and following uh, to breaking out of the box. Now, on the med is a difficult word sometimes for the Americans to speak. They call it on damned, on damned. It's on the med, which stands for wave medicine in its uh, Latin word. Now, on the med was invented by my husband just about 20 years ago in Germany. And my story started, as uh, Richard was saying, with my own son in getting involved when my son was five years old. He was discovered with a thrombus in the heart, one centimeter large. You see it here on the echocardiogram. And he was in the care of Westchester Medical Center as well as um, a children's hospital in Boston because he had had open heart surgery at the age of two. He was born with um, L transposition, con uh, congenital heart disease and he was in the hands of wonderful surgeons that corrected that problem. And at the age of two, he went through open heart surgery. And at the same time of doing the correction, they also implanted a pacemaker. So this is when medicine is at its best for such uh, uh, diseases, for such problems in surgical intervention. And it's, it's amazing what they can do. But when we come to chronic disease, this is when we sort of meet a barrier. And uh, when we um, were prescribed Coumadin to reduce the clot, for two and a half months, you can imagine, my son was out of his element. He was being poisoned while trying to reduce uh, the, um, um, the size of the clot, helping the coagulation. But Coumadin didn't do the trick. He was always, either his uh, coagulation was too thick or too thin, we couldn't get him into therapeutic ranges. Something was missing. And it was at that time in 2002 that God sent uh, my now husband, Rolf, uh, into my life and the Ondomet. So Rolf came into my life, he brought the Ondomet, it was, it was living in my living room. I wasn't quite sure yet what to do with it um, because it had just brand new arrived. But I was battling the situation with my son. And I was very nervous in using Ondomet because why? He has a pacemaker. And I didn't know if there was going to be an interference with the pacemaker output and, um, and didn't want to risk it. So I said, you know what, I'm going to take this device. I'm going to bring it down to Westchester Medical Center. And I'm going to have the cardiologist do an echocardiogram while having the pacemaker testing uh, done through the uh, Medtronics people. And the physicians and the pacemaker testing people had no choice. I brought my on -demand. I ran the frequencies into him because I needed to know if this was safe for my son. You know, it is difficult to treat patients. You're on a third uh, uh, arm, long distance relationship with them, so to speak. But treating your own family and treating your own child brings a whole nother dimension into it. 
But the physicians uh, told me that there was no change in the pacemaker signal. There was um, no interference, so I was free and clear to go. I had only one more week left before the cardiac surgeons would decide to do yet another open heart surgery because Coumadin clearly wasn't working. Catheterization wasn't working because it was too little and the clot was too big. And in that one week, I treated my son for 15 minutes over three days. We had the last INR on a Monday. And it was the first time ever that it was in therapeutic ranges that the INR level of 2.7. So here I was. I added biophysics to biochemistry. And it did the trick clearly because for two and a half months, nothing happened. So I did both. I continued to give him Coumadin. Back then, I didn't know any better. And, and I tell you what, as a mother of a sick child, you do not have any rights. It doesn't matter if you as a mother say, I do not want my son on Coumadin, because then social services would come in and take your son away. And that happened to me as well when I decided later on to, to drop the Coumadin. So here, we reduced the clot to one third of its size. And therefore, there was no more necessity of having to even talk about open heart surgery again. It was at this time that I said, you know what, in reading up on, on Coumadin and seeing my son throw himself on the floor, being totally toxic uh, and beside himself, that I said, I'm going to risk it because the risk is much bigger in having him continue to take the Coumadin. And we only did... Um, the on the mat with monthly, first weekly sessions, 15 minutes each. And it was interesting that in, um, and I'll go into details later, that when scanning the body and um, finding the main focus, that it wasn't in the heart. It was actually, and traditional Chinese medicine can support that, it was in the kidneys because the kidneys support the heart. And apparently his kidneys, so, uh, needed to have the stimulation of the on the frequencies. We would not know where to really treat in order to get a quick and, and lasting healing response if we wouldn't have the capability of the on the of the scanning, of finding those dysfunctional areas on the body and then stimulating these areas that need most attention. Well, today I tell you that my son has been um, medication free for 10 years, 12 years almost. He's now 16. He's a wonderful and troublesome teenager. And um, his, his heart has been opened. I don't know what his journey will be, but you can imagine that such a trauma does certain things to a young child. So now, when you see this picture, it is time for a new thought. It is time to take a breath. And you know that when you exhale, that this is a detox um, of your breath. It's not when you inhale that's important, it's the exhale that is the importance. It is important that we stay humble when we treat our patients. And that we come from the perspective, as Socrates did, that we don't know anything. And the more we know, we should really know that we don't know. And it leans on what Dr. Yu also said, uh, you took it to another level. But it is important that if we think that we know that we are already limiting ourselves to our own life experience, to our own reading, our own uh, learning, and that can be quite limited. I also want to remind you with this slide that medicine is nothing else but a philosophy. It should not be run by bureaucrats. It should not be run by protocols but we should be allowed to perform the art of healing. And every patient in front of you will cause a new challenge within you because every journey, every pattern of the patient will be so different. And you know, recently when I prepared for this uh, talk, I said to myself in looking at my own practice and working with patients, you know, yes, patients come to see us to help them live pain-free, have better sleep, have better movability, have clearer mental thought processes. But those are all symptoms that the body expresses. What is it really that our patients 
are seeking us for. And I put some slides in that I thought were in the forefront of what it really is, what is the underlying uh, search for, for most of our patients. And number one, they're looking for hope. They're looking to feel safe. They want to feel free. They want to be fearless, even if they don't know it consciously. But who wants to consciously live a life in fear? They wish to be respected. They want to be, and most importantly, feel beautiful. They want to love and be loved. And last but not least, they want to arrive home. Home, where we first started, in our nakedness, in our perfection, in our not thinking everything through, but simply being. Being the beautiful, wonderful human being that we have come to be and living that seed of power that we have come to live. All the other distraction that is deviating us, once we're deviated enough, we're going to be expressing symptoms of disease because we're not on the right path. It can be that easy. And I've got news for you. All of you are looking for the same thing. Every patient will give us that challenge of seeking a better us, a more developed us, a more humble us. A new thought. Well, I will need a tool that can provide me in tapping into the unseen, the unknown. And what do I need to do? I gotta zoom out, we'll do this again. I gotta capture patients more comprehensively. It's not about that one symptom or those other um, problems that the patient is reporting that they are suffering from. We have, rather than zooming in all the time on the biochemistry and on what hurts and what doesn't work, why don't we take a step back and take a, a, a bigger look at what these people's health journeys were all about. It's sort of getting to the patient's truth. Who is this patient? Who does this patient want to be? And like my friend Steven Sinatra said very beautifully about uh, the on the mat, he says, vibrational frequencies determined by sophisticated equipment like on the mat is a search for real truth. Now we don't talk much about in the peer reviewed literature about truth. What the heck is that? That's not a symptom. It's not something I can box in. And truth is uh, it's a thing of perspective. So now we need a tool that can help us to access certain points in the body, certain unknown and unseen um, issues that may hold back that individual from being the perfect human that they have come to be. And on the med uses, uh, which is known in auricular medicine, the vascular autonomic signal, we call it in the United States uh, the biofeedback loop. I mean, we call this, uh, this everywhere. But it's a biofeedback system. We're stimulating the patients with focused electromagnetic fields while scanning or while, you know, while treating. We're feeling for response in the, uh, the, the change of the radial pulse. It's almost like an amplification increase that guides us to, like a compass us, to find those areas of um, dysfunction. And yes, inflammation, as Dietrich said, inflammation is a, a talked a lot about these days. Of, and it is, um, in, uh, Time Magazine reported, that uh, it is a secret killer and the common denominator to most disease, which is a wonderful thing because now we're alerting the public that no, you're not stuck in the box. You, um, while we have all these uh, 
over 4,000 labels of, of disease names. Uh, inflammation also, of course, uh, is, um, is something that can be taken care of and not having to be put back into that box of fibromyalgia, multiple sclerosis, Lyme disease. But the question is, uh, you know, how do we find the inflammatory process in the body so that we can focus the stimulation because the body ain't working that way that we just throw a pill in and or we, we have a generic treatment and then the inflammation is going to just pass. The body needs specificity in order to heal quickly and lastingly. We know this from the yogi masters. It's all about specificity. And this is where Onlamed comes in and working in a very focused way. And when we want, like Dr. Casilda James does in this, um, this picture, she's an allergy specialist in New York, she wants the applicator, this is the handheld applicator, along the body to find, with the help of the pulse biofeedback or the vascular autonomic signal, help find areas that the patient doesn't consciously tell or know about. It is an, it's tapping into the unseen, the unknown, tapping into sort of a subconscious level of that individual. And rather than us practitioners being guided by what we think is wrong with this individual, what we think this person needs first in order to, uh, to, to get them better in terms of uh, whether that is um, a, a medical device or whether that is um, pharmaceuticals, nutraceuticals, we can lean on, just like with AIV, but it's a different approach. We can lean here on the, um, the feedback being guided by the patient, him or herself. And the areas that we find could um, be an inflammatory process. It could be an infectious process. It could be a scar tissue, which could be anywhere on the body, inside and out, like neural therapy. And Dietrich here has, has once treated me, and I got really sick from that treatment, which um, thank you so much, because I rebirthed in that night. <laughs> I can use the Ondamed in, um, in also treating scars, but not with, uh, with needle and procaine, but I, I just use uh, focused field stimulation. <laughs> But most exciting for me is that we are able to find memory of unresolved trauma or shock that can be residing anywhere on the body. And it is not that I rape people into getting to those um, unresolved memories. I use, again, the biofeedback loop. I find areas, and as I stimulate, I'm waiting for the patient to sort of have a reaction to the stimulation, and then a memory comes up. And people will start crying, they, they will start telling stories, or whatever the, the case may be, they start laughing. And something is starting to release naturally. I'm not tapping in and I'm not forcing the body to go to that stage, because I could cause yet another trauma. So specific fields created by, once again, this is the handheld applicator, and this is a dysfunctional tissue site. While we already are in treatment mode, we can detect those areas and then we send the focused fields into the area of where the applicator is pointing, and we're there like a, like a magnet does to needles, when the applicator points to that area, then the immune system is being alerted. It uh, now recognizes a previously sheltered area and does what it knows to do. So we're uncloaking, like the cloaking devices from Star Trek, we're uncloaking these invisible areas. <laughs> 